Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're looking at getting those hob grots out of their boxes and onto the tabletop. In this tutorial we're going to be using a simple palette of six paints or five paints in the shade I suppose technically. A full list is available in the description. As you can see the miniature is primed in a white. This one is Corax white. The first paint up is Agros Dunes contrast paint which we're going to be applying all over the skin. You don't have to be tidy or neat about it. Is every other base coat that we're going to be laying down is more than capable of covering over the contrast paint. So just go for speed over neatness. Because you are going to be painting a lot of these guys. So just get a nice even coat all over the entire miniature. When you're putting down this first coat, just remember to get in behind the armour panelling here that he has on his chest. Because of the way most of these miniatures are assembled, there's a gap there. So make sure you work in some contrast paint there just to cover it up. So he's been given an all, all over coat and we're just going to leave him to dry. If you're batch painting it, you can just move on to the next miniature. And by the time you've moved through the unit, the first one is probably going to be dry. Now that we've given time for the contrast paint to dry. Next up is some Tyrant Skull. To dry, this is one of Citadel's dry paints. If you don't have access to Tyrant Skull, you could use something like Screaming Skull. Not, there's not that much of a difference between them. And we're taking a large dry brush and we're just going to dry brush the entire miniature. This is a light dry brush. We're just trying to bring out some extra detail, not deposit a, lo a lot of paint. So, the first of the base coats. Is to apply Rune Lord brass on the armor pieces and this little trinket he has dangling there in front. I'm applying this with a medium layer brush. I chose this over lead belcher that will that we'll be applying later on to the weapons. Purely just add a bit, an extra bit of colour and variation. If you don't have Rune Lord Brass, you can certainly just use Lead Belcher. Here you can see the completed Rune Lord Brass. In a similar way to the contrast paint earlier, just remember to get the edges there and on the other side. The armour sticks out from the body or his legs here, so make sure you get the back as well. So next up, we move on to Lead Belcher, which we're going to apply to any remaining metallic areas on this miniature. He has two knives that he has in his hands and his sulphur grenade that he has hanging off his belt. Here you can see the completed Lead Belcher. As well as the weapons and his grenade, a lot of the hobgrots also have a band around their arms. Or one of their one of their arms anyway. Which I've done in Lead Belcher as well. So now that that's done, we move on to the final base coat. And that is Rackard Flesh. And we're going to be doing that on all the strapping that he has holding on his armour. And these little tassel -y bits hanging off him. And he has a bit of a fabric there on his back. I don't think he has it on the front. This is definitely the most time consuming part. But it's not, not crazy time consuming. So we'll be sticking with a medium layer brush. You can swap down to a small if you need to. I think a lot of the detail is easy to get to. So I'm going to stick with the medium brush. I always use the, lar the largest brush that I can. It just saves time when you swap when you step down to a small smaller brush. You're just slowing yourself down. So if you're not get if you don't need to stick with a larger brush. Rackard flesh always surprises me. Its coverage is always impressive for such a pale color. It's one of the reasons why I kind of like using it a lot. 
So I've, got, I've also gone over the miniature and just tidied up and made sure all the base layers are neat and tidy before we move on to the final step which is a shade of Agrax Earthshade over everything except the flesh so the metallics and the rackard flesh areas so we're going to apply the Agrax Earthshade with a medium layer brush and we're just going to apply it on, on all the areas that aren't skin you can be quite liberal and apply a lot it'll just give it a dirtier look just avoid any excessive pooling so while the Agrax Earthshade is drying we're going to grab just an old scrap brush and some PVA glue and we're just going to layer it all over the base and we're just simply going to apply a sand to the base so now that I have the PVA on the base we're taking our mix of sand now a lot of the stones in this are a bit too big so I'm just going to move them aside I'm looking for smaller ones and holding the miniature by the head because I don't want to interfere with the Agrax Earthshade that's still drying and we're just going to dunk them in and move them around and tap off any excess sand here you can see the sand on the base you notice that it's a bit too too bright the sand is more akin to a tropical beach than a swamp so we're just going to leave the, the PVA dry and then we're going to give the base a simple wash of Agrax Earthshade paint the rim black and attach a few tufts here and there I haven't done any highlighting on these miniatures so I wanted to keep them you know, relatively easy to do this guy is a basic hobgrot but within the unit there's a few additional, un additional minis like this guy who is the unit champion but he does have some poison hanging off his blade and I've done that by simply applying Tesseract Glow, the technical paint over the white base coat so when I was painting when I was painting his sword I made sure I didn't get any lead belcher on the white and then I just simply gave it a, a layer of the Tesseract Glow I think it turned out perfectly fine outside him there's the musician I painted his horn that he's blowing into in Rune Lord Brass and I gave it a dry brush of a silver just to add that tiny bit of extra detail because it is so the, the horn itself is quite large and outside that the last guy is standard bearer and with this guy I alternated the colours on the tokens that he has on his on his pole. So I've done Rune, Rune Lord Brass in the middle and Lead Belcher on the outside. The shaft itself is just simple wild wood contrast paint. Here you can see the unit on the table and it does look in my opinion more than good enough to be called tabletop. Don't forget to check out the Gut Ripper tutorial that I've already done. If you haven't already seen it, I'll leave a card in the, on the screen.